Hi and welcome to a video on um, constructing the centroid of a triangle. So we're going to do this two ways. We're going to use the Desmos tools um, to quickly create midpoints to connect to the vertices so that we can make our medians. So I'm going to select each side of my triangle select the more tools and make midpoints. And I do this for every single one of my sides because remember the point of concurrency that we're making is the centroid and you make the centroid by creating all of the medians of your triangle and the way you create a median is by connecting the midpoint of a side to the vertex of the opposite angle. So I have just used Desmos to quickly create that point of concurrency called the centroid that is also called the center of gravity. So I'm going to go ahead and label that and um, let's see, oops, label it, there we go. And we're going to call that our centroid. And remember, the centroid has some really cool properties, especially if you actually have a physical triangle to play with. We're going to measure the short side and compare it to the long side of every median that is split by the centroid. So we're going to discover that there is a ratio no matter what triangle you have. We're going to measure the long side by hitting that label and the short side by hitting that label. And you can see if we make this a number that's a little bit more friendly, maybe around eight. Let's see if I can get it. Ah, there. Oh, okay. Well, in any case, if we get the eight, you can see that it's an eight to four ratio. And this happens for all three sides. Eight to four is a two to one ratio. So the long side is always going to be twice as big as the shorter side of the median. So that's what the centroid does. And that's why the median or the centroid creates a center of gravity. So if you actually cut out a triangle, you, you make all the medians and you put your pencil on that centroid or the center of gravity, you should be able to balance your little triangle perfectly as long as it's made out of something of uniform density. Okay, so that is our quick, quick way to make our centroid. Now let's say that you had paper and a pencil and construction tools. You'd have to go about this a little bit different. So I'm gonna simulate that for you on Desmos. So we're gonna start with a triangle again. And remember, a compass is a circle making tool. So I'm gonna make my triangle a little bit smaller. Oops, make sure I have a triangle first of all. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and to get the midpoint of each side, I need to create perpendicular bisectors. So I'm gonna grab my circle tool. I'm gonna go from one segment to the opposite, one segment to the opposite. That way I'm creating two circles with exactly the same radii. So these points of intersection of the circles are equidistant from the endpoints, which means that this point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the endpoint, so it's a midpoint of that side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide all the stuff that I don't want so that I'm only left with my midpoint. So hide that. I'm gonna even hide the perpendicular bisector there. I'm gonna hide these points that I don't want and I'm gonna be left with my midpoint. Once I just have my midpoint, I'm gonna connect it to the opposite vertex and there I have my first median. I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna go from this side to this side. I have two congruent circles, which means every point on one circle is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. I have a midpoint right here, and I'm gonna hide all of my extra stuff. I'm gonna hide this circle, this circle, my perpendicular bisector, but I'm gonna keep my midpoint and I'm gonna connect it to the opposite vertex and I'm gonna hide these two points that I don't need as well. So make sure you hide them, don't delete them. If you delete the points, um, the, the items that you need for your construction will also be deleted. Okay, now I'm gonna do that one more time for this last segment. Create my line, connect my points of intersection, oops, of my circles. I think I missed that one, you gotta make sure and when you're doing this, it sticks right to your point of intersection. So you might want to move your diagram so you, you get those points of intersection easily identified. Okay, we're going to hide this. I'm going to hide this circle as well. Hide my perpendicular bisector. And we are going to connect that midpoint to the opposite vertex. 
And you can see again that we have points of concurrency of this triangle and those two little points, I'm gonna get rid of those. They're a little bit distracting, but um, they are moving because they're connected to segments or lines that I have hidden. So you can see again, we've created our point of concurrency and that point of concurrency is called the centroid. So I'm gonna label it. And if you were using a compass and a straight edge, you would have to do something similar to what I just did on Desmos. You would have to use um, those perpendicular bisectors to get your midpoints. So I hope, you, I hope you found this video helpful and that you're a little bit more nimble with the Desmos geometry tool and have a little bit of a better understanding of what a centroid of a triangle is. Thank you for watching.